Hi, this is Dave, AC5N, Alpha Charlie 5 November. I kind of wanted to go over some of my mobile stuff. Uh, really, I wanted to, I'm going to kind of go over this uh, UR6QW 10-band equalizer. But this is my setup on my new truck, my 2021 Ford F250. It's running um, a Yesu FT891 with a couple of Anytone radios, a tri-bander and a dual-bander, um, running DMR. I have a hotspot for it, a Bridgecom hotspot for it. Um, multiple types of power um, to run different things. Um, basically, this stuff is run off a six gauge uh, going all the way back, and then uh, um, with a, when some say to do it, some say not, but it's got a, a power pole uh, fuse box in there. That stuff is fused separately. Separately, the radio ground ground is running directly to the ground. The power is running to the fuse. Um, and it's only like a, a foot long, uh, ground going to the body of the truck. And this is all aluminum body. The truck's bonded all over. Uh, this is the, uh, up down for the Scorpion screwdriver antenna I have, which is custom cap hat. If you go on Facebook, there's a Scorpion group and, uh, you'll see pictures of the custom mount I made for the Scorpion. Uh, I, I have a laptop in here. I'm running an SDR. That's underneath the con inside the console. That SDR is um, I forget the the Air Spy HF or whatever it is. The that seems to work better. I have three different ones to try and seems to be the best working one in order to pop off pop out HF signals and dedicated more to HF. Um, there's an MFJ 1708 SDR S and there's an SDR 1708B SDR. And, and 1708B SDRS. The difference is the SDRS, the output going to the SDR, is a mic, is a, um, a um, SMA connector. So why have a big old UH, UHF or PL259 connector when I can, the, the SDR takes a, an SMA. So I go SMA to SMA. It's really simple. Um, you can it's it's rf sensing it's an rf sensing unit so it, it detects it to block it but i do have a dx engineering um thing to filter in between her so i don't end up smoking the sdr and uh and you can also set up from your radio to the mfj 1708 to also you know ground it out to shut it off so you don't uh, fry the input to the SDR because they're not cheap. I mean, it's like about 170 bucks or something for the SDR. So you don't want to blow that out. Um, lots of setting changes when you're going to run the UR6QW. So like I said, it is an, it is a 10 band equalizer. Um, and to me, I just like it because it's smaller, the new version seven versus the manual knob one and stuff like that. Now, granted on the manual knob one, you can sit there and make your changes and stuff like that. If you on the fly that you see where this is a little bit harder, uh, I mean, you know, especially driving. I I don't I talk on the radio when I'm driving, but I'm really conscious about that. I'm on the radio, so that's why the whole SDR setup. I mean, I use a mouse sitting on my thing here. I, I almost don't have to look at my radio. Um, I just change. I can I can use the 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 mouse wheel and actually change around in the frequency band. If I want to do anything else, I just click on it um, on the screen, which will control the radio. And I'm you running on, I'm running HD SDR on the laptop with OmniRig. So OmniRig is the setup to control the radio. So it's plugged in by USB from the back of the radio to the laptop. Um, going back to the EQ. So you have different inputs. So you don't have to run, you know, a certain mic, but I am, I'm running the ASU mic. So there's a couple changes on here. The top one will be if you're running like a regular Yesu mic, you can change the input by going to here. If you're going to run a different type, like an XLR mic or something, you need to go down there. Um, as far as settings, you can go into levels. Hopefully, I hit that. The levels in there you can do is you can adjust gain. Um, you can do a noise gate. Um, so if you got a lot of background noise and stuff like that, you can with the bar all the way up right here on the top you'll see um that's basically the gates shut off if you start to bring it down something so i cut out a little bit of background noise but not much 
Um, it's got a compressor built into it. And of course the drive coming out of it and then the monitor. So if you wanted to monitor yourself, it's just the volume level and stuff like that. It's not much changes. Anytime you make a change, you select one of these and then you rotate the dial. Oops, see if I can get the pointer over. You rotate this and then when you're done, all you're gonna do is push the button to get back up. And then if you wanna go into say the EQ, you would hit EQ. And then it's a 10 band equalizer, so you can change your lows all the way to your highs to whatever your preference is. The best way to do it, of course, is to tune it with people on the air, not just one people, multiple people, because not everybody's hearing the same. And not everybody likes to hear the same thing. So you're trying to find this average overall thing. And you can set it up for doing rag chews with your buddies, or you can set it up for doing DX and trust, trying to bust a pile up into Europe somewhere. Um, it, it's all up to you in the same way. Anytime you want to change it, you just hit one of these buttons and that changes that frequency, which is directly related. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And then when you're done, you just hit the button to get back out. And then it, it's got an echo processor in there. So if you wanted to add some echo, I, it, it, one of these would be highlighted. If there was echo, I'm not going to run an echo. That's a CB type thing. And uh, I mean, a little bit of echo, a little bit of echo and delay i mean a tiny bit might sound pleasing in some situations where you can't really tell there's an echo but there's something there make it sound a little bit different i'm not into it i just uh to me it's easier just to leave it off and then you come back out of it and um the pass on the end on the right hand side to pass is to bypass the whole eq and uh, in case you want to flip back and forth but once you change your radio settings which you're going to have to change several you got to figure this thing is doing all your your audio your mic processing for you so in that sense you need to go into your radio and turn off a lot of things so one of the things that you're looking at you see i got alc up on there because you know how alc is especially on these f2 ft 891s if you got if you're bumping more than quarter scale alc on there you're probably got bad audio and it, it gets kind of distorted so it's best to keep that down especially if you're running an amplifier um, you just want to tickle that ALC and don't go any higher on that. Once you get into the menus here, you really need to look at what you've got. So um, you have multiple different EQ settings, basically where it says PEQ. Those are the compressor settings. So if I was out of here and I went into my menu, oops, sorry about that, and I went into... The regular menus and uh, scroll over and you see PRC. I'm sorry for the reflection, but you see where the arrow is pointing. That's PRC. That's your compressor. Compressor, you want that off. Um, when you're running EQ, you don't want no compression on there. Come back out of here. Go back in the big menus. And then what you're going to do is on all these settings for all the EQs, whether compressor compression's off or compressions on is you're going to go on there and you're going to shut them off so basically where it says eq1 frequency just rotate it till it's off same thing with all of them and then go in there and off now the only thing that is kind of a game on this that you'll have to play around with and i'm no expert at it but you got single sideband mic gain and if you see on there i'm at a seven out of a hundred okay um I do have gain and drive in the EQ, the UR6QW EQ, and, but this is kind of where I settle where inside the radio, I'm just barely pushing a mic gain to take the output from the UR6QW and then put it through the radio. But there's no compression, no, no EQ used in the radio, only through the UR6QW. And it works. And then when you're adjusting stuff on here, you can see the things moving because the mic is open all the time. Obviously, when you're transmitting, it's a different thing. But if you look in here, and I'm talking, this is Alpha Charlie 5, November AC5N. So you want it to go up in the green, not too far in the red. So if I get up in here and I go, hello, and I yell in there, it goes into the red. But your normal talking when you're up against the mic, you can do all the settings on there. You can watch that, and you can see, hey, I just want to go up in the green. Maybe tickle if I'm talking. Hey, I, I, I would bump in a little bit into the red maybe, but hardly ever in order to get good audio out of it. And like to say, the best way is to um, find somebody else and get on the radio and see how it sounds. 
So that's basically it. I'll answer anybody questions anybody got it. I'm no expert at it. Um, I just got most of this stuff set up. Um, I have a run a 7300 ICOM in my other truck with a Tar Heel, um, and uh, got this set up kind of the way I want. I do have an amp to go in it. I haven't put it in yet. I wanted to make sure all this stuff was working before I started playing the amplifier game, uh, especially in a new truck. <laughs> Um, I'm sure they're going to be happy the first time I go in for service and they see that I got these, you know, four gauge going to an amplifier from one battery and six gauge going from the other battery into my radio system here. And they'll go be, what the heck? Because you read right in their manual, they talk about any communications stuff like two-way radios needs to be done by an authorized deal. Well, I'm an engineer, so I, I guess I, I, I just say I'm authorized because they're not going to outspeak me anyway, so... Anyway, so well, hopefully I get you on the air sometime. This Alpha Charlie 5 November AC5N. This is my mobile rig. And uh, I'll be on the radio more often than not. Um, I actually just got a new Flex 6700 and a Power Genius XL amplifier for at home. And I have a uh, stepper antenna in the back uh, at about 50 feet. Uh, it can only go up to 60 feet here in Albuquerque. That's our limit. So I couldn't go too high. I'll probably move sometime and put some big towers up and get some good gain but it works you know uh, my current radio upstairs is an icom 7700 with uh, the pw1 amp the 1k solid stain amp but it'll be nice going to the flex i mean it's nice getting even if you're thinking of doing an sdr it's so simple because um especially when you're just trying to see what's going on with the bands and i know i got ref unfortunately got all this reflection in there i apologize but um it's nice just to just to be on a on a thing. Oops, sorry for the fingers. And say I want to change bands, I just go up and move the move the cursor, and then move my. Uh, oops. Find uh, everybody on everything. That's so pretty good. Uh, April Fool joke. I know it's hard to see, but basically when I'm moving my mouse, you can yeah, see like see the radios too. All right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it makes it nice. Hey, Phil, would you forward that to me? I just Anyways, take care. If you got any questions on my setup, or maybe you did something different that you could um, advise me on, that say, hey, maybe you need to look out for this, or maybe you change these settings or something like that. I'm no expert at it. I'm just learning on on the new equipment, so uh, I'm always looking for advice. Take care, hope to hear you on the air, AC5N.